Hey everyone, it is Tuesday, October 23rd, and we are live at 5. I'm Paul Wontora. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And hey, over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Oh, I liked your <laughs> choreography. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh my God, Shayna Taub is here. She <laughs> is, yes. Everyone Amazing. is falling for this new recording of Twelfth Night, and yes. everyone's falling with, for her in general. She is. It is a big year for Shayna. Right? Yes. It's yeah, all happening. Absolutely. So we're going to talk to her, but first, today's top five. The superhero casting has been announced. Yeah, so a little while back, we found out about the world premiere of this new musical, Superhero, and we found out that Kate Baldwin and Bryce Pinkham were going to be a part of it. Super excited. You also have Tom Super Kitt. Super excited for Super oh. for Superhero. We have Tom Kitt that. doing the score. You've got John Logan writing the book, Jason Moore directing, and now we know a few of the people who will be joining Kate and Bryce in the show. Julia Abueva, Selena Koreshi, Tom Sesma, mm -hmm. Nathaniel Sampley, and Jake Levy, or Levy. One of those. I apologize if I got it wrong. They will be joining them in the production, which will begin January 31st at the Second Stage. Second Stage is Tony Kaiser Theater next year, January 31st, and it will officially open on February 28th, in case you don't remember. This follows a fractured family, a mysterious stranger in apartment 4B, and an unexpected hero who might just save the day. So are there superpowers or not? What do you think? I mean, it's called superhero. I would assume there are superpowers. Human superpowers. But you know, know. like, uh, exactly. Like, you know, is, are they just a superhero because they do good things? Not mm. necessarily with powers, but superheroes are all the rage right now, right? <laughs> Everyone wants to be sure. part of the Marvel family. Oh, sure. sure. Except yeah. on Netflix. So. Aren't they canceling superhero shows? They canceled two of them. Sorry. A, yes. That's, but, a, that's a Paul Ryan But thing. Jessica Netflix. Jones is still going, so <laughs> that's all I care about. Unrelated. <laughs> unrelated. Un completely but, unrelated. But yeah, I'm super excited for this. Team. Everyone involved, I've heard, really loves it. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, and you couldn't ask for a better team to put this all together. So, very excited. Next year, starting it off with Superhero. And this Oscar-winning movie is getting the musical treatment in Europe. Hey, speaking of the Tony Kaiser Theater, yes. years ago, right. I saw the Little Miss oh. Sunshine musical there That's right. uh, that William Finn wrote. And James Lapine, of course, mm -hmm. who wrote Falsettos and Spelling Bee. And now Little Miss Sunshine will make its European uh, premiere, finally, mm -hmm. at yeah. the Arcola Theater in London mm -hmm. in 2019. March 21st, it starts for a seven-week run. It will be followed by a UK tour. Wow, I guess they're really they're getting really behind it. They're really buckling in the Little Miss Sunshine. Um, Mehmet Ergen will direct. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Stephanie J. Block, Will Swenson, Roy, Roy O'Malley, Wes Taylor were all in it off-Broadway. We don't know who will be in it in Europe. But this is what it's about. Uh, what's it about? The family in the van and yes, the little so girl. She wants to be a pageant girl. <laughs> That's exactly it. And her, that grand, enough, her grandfather acts as her like pageant coach. Yeah, and there's yes. a nice surprise later in the show. And the, yeah, no, it's, it's a good. sweet show. It is. It is good music. And this Emmy winner is fueling some funny Broadway rumors. This yes. is interesting. This is interesting. Let us. Let Can me, we trust Rosie O'Donnell? Let me take you back. <laughs> Who knows? So a little while, in in the midst of all of the stars born hullabaloo, Rosie O'Donnell said that she was, you know, she was part of a new production of Funny her Girl. Randy Rainbow yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, that R Funny Girl was coming to Broadway, and Lady Gaga was going to star, and she was going to play her mother. Naturally. And then a little digging happened and was like, oh, maybe, maybe Lady Gaga. Well, then we asked for confirmation and yeah, they were no like, one that's had so it. not yeah. true. She was <laughs> so, joking. Yeah. yeah. And Lady, because Lady Gaga's super busy right Lady now. Lady Gaga, has I a have. Vegas residency coming up. But I have heard she. She is she, interested in Broadway. There's is. sort of yeah. a large plan to eventually do Broadway. Absolutely. And Maybe we not wait. right now. Maybe not right now. We can't have her. However, Rosie O'Donnell, in an interview with Out Magazine, said, listen, Funny Girl is still happening. We do know that director Michael Mayer has the rights from well, the estate. Because he did it in we London. Sheridan, Sheridan, Sheridan Smith. Um, Smith. Yeah, we both who, were like And now that. it's in cinemas, right? You yes. can see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's saying it is still happening, and Michael Mayer will be directing. She's still the and mom. she's playing the mom. But we don't know who's playing Fanny. But no, no. And and an official transfer of this musical has not been officially announced. So this right. is all just from the mouth of Rosie O'Donnell. Can we so, trust her? Can we Big trust her? I mean, she, I mean, she's been involved in Broadway, obviously. Yeah. Grease and Susical, and um, she produced Taboo. Fiddler, which I know you're Harvey a big Firestein, fan of. Remember yes, that? Absolutely. So. It's all a big TBD, you know. Like, <laughs> let's let's hope that all sounds fun. Um, but no Gaga. Gaga's going well, to Vegas. Maybe. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe years <laughs> from now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see. Excited, regardless. And this composer's never-before-heard songbook is getting new life on election night. 
Uh, so oh, the late great shoot. Michael Friedman. So the civilians and Green Room 42 have teamed up to present his State of the Union songbook. Mm-hmm. Right. So and it will benefit the Michael Friedman Legacy Fund. Yep. And this is happening on election night, November 6th, for two shows. 7 p.m. and 9.30. So during the 2016 election campaigns, mm-hmm. Michael Freeman went across the country and interviewed a cross-section of the citizens. He set these word-for-word interviews to music and called it the State of the Union song I remember. Book. Cool. Yes. And yeah. of course, he wrote Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, Fortress of Solitude, a uh, very talented guy who died last September. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to get to hear them again on election night. And this event will be directed by Steve Cosmo, musical direction by... Wiley DeWess. DeWess? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Wiley. Uh, and oh, look at this. If you wear an I, you might like this, Ryan. I, <laughs> I was hoping <laughs> if you wear an I Voted sticker, you get a yep. free glass of wine. Yeah, don't you dare walk into this theater without voting earlier that day. If you are eligible to, eligible to vote, yeah. you go vote first. Then you can go celebrate with some Michael do Friedman get, music. How do I get? I'm doing absentee voting. Do I get an I voted sticker in the mail? I, I need to. I'm, I'm gonna get. I don't one. know. I'm yeah, get you, one. yeah. Vote.org. You can find out all that information. I'm sure on there. Heck yeah, and love is in the air on Broadway. Yes, it is. Alex Fink from Come From Away, of course, and Joe Carroll, who is in the Broadway-bound production of Moulin Rouge. Mm-hmm. They got married. Congratulations. We found out that they were engaged in December of 2017, and they were officially wed on October 21st of this year. You can see Alex Fink in Come From Away. You will be able to see Joe Joe Carroll, who you may know from Bandstand or Romeo and Juliet, Cinderella. Once, he may be back on the boards for Moulin Rouge. They're both adorable. They haven't announced they're the super dates cute. Yet, but we know no, it's coming. yes, we know it's coming, but no dates yet. Uh, they're both adorable. Beautiful photos of them. Super cute. Congrats to another. They're honeymooning love now. Film. Are they honeymooning yeah, right now? Take a break. Take yes, a break, guys. Take a break. Absolutely. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. Then come back. But yeah, congrats. On that happy news, I like the little round of applause you gave them. Thank you. That was yes. sweet. Yes. Well, you know. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Uh, hey, happy to be Caitlin. Here. Yes. Why don't you tell us more about today's guest? Yes. Guys, today you're sh- uh, Shana Taub in the studio with us today. The cast recording of her acclaimed public theater production of the musicalized version of Twelfth Night was just released on October 19th, and she's here to celebrate its first week on sale. And not only is she responsible for the music and lyrics, but she was also part of the cast, too. She's double dipping. Um, and also, she's appeared in three adaptions of Shakespeare plays at the Public Works Public works program with different version of Twelfth Night and As You Like It. She was off, you, you may have seen her off Broadway in Old Hats, Natasha Pierre, and The Great Comet of 1812 in Haney's Town. Uh, her next project is working with Elton John and Paul Rudnick on the Broadway bound The Devil Wears Prada. We have a lot to talk about because she's incredible. Make sure to follow her on social media at Shana Taub and leave all of your questions for her in the comments down below. Please welcome Shana and Paul. Hello, Shana. Hi. Thank, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Glad I just keep you. hearing, everyone's talking about you. Do you feel the, are you feeling the buzz? People have really fallen in love with your talents well, over the last few. We're working hard, so it's nice to feel something yeah, that's pay right. off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It must feel nice. How does it feel to have, this is now out. Yeah. This is, this is your uh, cast <laughs> recording. Uh, fantastic production. Beautiful thank score. You. How does it feel to have this this done. It feels amazing. I mean, I was a total theater kid. I lived on albums, yeah. obsessed over them, obsessed over the lyric booklets right. and memorizing all the names. And they were my whole life. And sort of like really actually ha- to have made one and be a part of hopefully, you know, some other kids listening to a record like this means a lot to me. And by the yeah. way, amazing lyric book. Oh, thanks. I mean, yeah, the great. musical company I mean, and craft like recordings a big, did a great job. This is like job. the kind that I would really be like, again, like you yeah. like you said, like pouring through as a kid. And they matter. Yeah, they did a beautiful job with it. And I'm, I'm glad we got to do it so thoughtfully and carefully because it's, it's, it's permanent. It's nice. You know, we make things on stage that can feel so fleeting. And it's nice to have something that feels like it has permanence to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this show and your talents definitely have permanence. What, what were your cast albums growing up? What were you obsessed I with? I mean, big. The first two, like the gateway drugs of cast albums, was Chorus Line and Guys and Dolls. Okay. I got those two, and then, but I mean, then it was Rent and Ragtime. Okay. I mean, those were yep. big, big all yep. the time. I was really into Footloose. Oh, <laughs> it was like, happy 20th anniversary. I know. Footloose. No, I saw that. I saw Footloose on Broadway with my grandparents, and I was obsessed with that cast album. See that? Footloose yeah. had all sorts. See, because I, I, was, I was saying, I, I did a video with uh, Jennifer Fuller Thompson yes. and Jeremy Kushner, mm-hmm. which everyone can see next week. 
But, uh, you know, I really feel like now it's so commonplace to see movies become musicals. And back then it really wasn't. Totally. It was the only one that season. Totally. Yeah. I love that. I love Dancing is Not a Crime. That's my favorite, like, <laughs> deep, deep cut song. I know. I still know all the words. But yeah. I love that it also inspired talents like you. Look at that. Footloose really made an impact. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. And then, yeah. And Everybody then cut. Merrily We Roll Along. That was my other one. Oh. They did it. Yeah, I saw it. Always. Local production. I know. That, that's always, like, one of my, like, go-tos. Yeah. Totally. Everything. Uh, so you grew up in Vermont. In Vermont. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're a Vermont girls, and so were you exposed to a lot of theater? And yeah, I mean, even growing up in a really rural area, there was a great community theater in Burlington, Vermont that uh-huh. uh, I got to do productions at, and then I went to the summer camp, Stage Manor. Manor. Okay. So I was like a theater oh. camp kid, and so that was where it really I kind of got cast on for the first time and got kind of learning about different shows, and so I was Stage obsessed. Stage Manor is famous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's nice about it is that my friends that I met as a nine-year-old there were all like still doing theater together, all still friends. All Anyone really. that we know? Yeah, um, Itai Benson is uh-huh. one of my best friends. We grew up together at theater camp. It's been so amazing Vance to watch visit. his success. Yeah. Him. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Totally. That's amazing. Yeah. I've seen photos of him, I think, doing shows there. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played, and that's the thing, you were just playing roles that you were way too young and wrong to play. Like, for me, I played all these, like, Cheetah Rivera roles. That oh, was, like, I my could thing. See that. <laughs> I was Lillian LaFleur in Nine. Oh. Uh huh. I was Anita in West Side Story. <laughs> like, wow, you were. <laughs> I played all these roles, like, I have no business playing and will never play again, but I got to play them as a 13 year old in my best life. And... Wow, you provided a lot <laughs> as a kid to these roles. I love that. I don't know what I had to bring to Lillian. <laughs> In the floor in like so years. when did you start writing songs? I mean, because you're you're really balancing this acting and uh, songwriting and and performance career. How, when did that start? When did you start writing music? Yeah, well, I was always playing piano and took piano lessons, and I think kind of now that I look back, sort of closet writing as a teen, you know, and I, I just wasn't really pursuing it in any serious way. Yeah. But then in college, I took a class with Elizabeth Suedos. Oh. Uh, that completely changed my life. I hadn't considered writing at all. I just, you know, musicals came to me like this. They came to me like fully formed things from the musical theater North Pole. Like I didn't, I didn't fathom the idea of process until I got to college. I was like, oh yeah, musicals are something like human beings make (laughs) together in a room. And so I took Liz's class and started writing for the first time at her encouragement and kind of started from there. So that was my sophomore year of college. Wow, that's amazing. So you came to New York and you started acting and right, you started- Yeah, I came to NYU for school and I was a performance major, but then yeah, between Liz's class and performing, I started to do a mix of both while in school and have just done a mix of both ever since. So so how did you get to this point? How did you start, you know, having people hear your voice? And and you've been writing, uh, you also wrote As You Like, you've been writing Uh other shows, and As You Like, aren't they doing it in DC? They are, yeah, it's been so exciting with the musical company licensing these shows that the first uh, that'll be like the regional premiere the of that show. Theater. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm gonna go see it in a couple of weeks. Oh, cool! That's and that's fun. a cool thing to feel. Speaking of permanence, like that these shows will kind of exist. I'm so used to being in the room for everything. I'm like, oh, I love the idea that these will. I've seen two high school productions already. Like, wow, so it's, that's a really exciting. That's amazing, thing. and that's yeah. that's why it's great about things like this. Like, yeah. it will keep getting done. Yeah, yeah, and people can learn the lyrics because it's a beautiful lyric book. Did I mention that? <laughs> yeah. Nice lyric, lyric book. book. Easy to learn the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. You, do you feel how, how how did you get um, like the public? Obviously, the public has offered you a lot of opportunity. You had an amazing residency at Joe's yeah, Pub. Yeah, the public has been great. I I've been doing concerts at Joe's Pub for many years, and then I was such a fan of the Public Works program. I saw the first incarnation of the Tempest in 2013. That, Let's explain to everyone what the Public Works program yeah. how it really works. So Public Works is a community engagement program at the Public Theater that brings together New Yorkers from all over the city, <laughs> all different kinds of folks to make giant shows at the Delacorte, but it's beyond just the summer at the Delacorte. They do year-round programming of Shakespeare classes at these community centers all around the city, and really now going into, I think it's sixth or seventh year of developing these long-term relationships with these communities who not only do the show in the summer, yeah, take the classes, come to shows at the public. It's really an hmm. incredible thing, and it was created by Lear de Bessonet. It's mm-hmm. her vision, and she and Todd Allman made the first show, the first three shows, actually, but the first one I saw, The Tempest, and I was so obsessed with it, just the whole notion of it and bringing hundreds of people onto the stage. and. Yeah. Uh, it just really felt like this community event in the way of like the community theater of my youth that I love that it just sort of I connected to it I, I remember making a big post about it just as a fan <laughs> and then uh, two years later I got a call I had met Lear socially and was a fan of hers too and just got an amazing call to work on it and kind of uh-huh. this last three years has been a big part of what I've done yeah. you also have some great uh, solo recordings out there too Thanks, yeah. yeah you've been you've been doing a lot and more yeah. recently now everyone is talking about Double Works Prada which is 
crazy. <laughs> I mean, first of all, everyone is so excited that they're making a musical. Yeah. That was Prada. And then we heard Elton John is writing the music and Paul Rudnick, right? Yeah. And then we heard Love. you and it's like, we need to watch this show. When is this, when are we going to get to see this show? I'm so excited. I mean, <laughs> we're working away on it. We're like, yeah, I've been writing with Elton and Paul. I love everyone involved. I like, I know the movie by heart. It's one of my favorite movies. I yeah. think it totally belongs on stage because it's just the world of fashion is so theatrical uh -huh. and the characters are amazing. I'm just so excited to do this story about two really driven, smart, amazing women having this complex relationship. And yeah, I'm loving it. We're, we're, we're deep in it right now. But what was yeah. it like beating Elton? It was great. I mean, you know, it was. He, I've looked up to him for so long. I've listened to his music my whole life. Uh, I was nervous, yeah. but he's cannot be more kind, more collaborative, more open, and amazing. And just immediately made me feel right at home with him and his band. And I mean, it's. It's. I think it will always like be a little surreal, but I have to say, like, he's been just such an amazing collaborator. I've been so delighted. <laughs> Every step of the way. Yeah. Amazing. I yeah. love it. Are you excited to be writing a big musical like that? I am, and that's what I want. Like, you know, having grown up on these chasms, I want to make shows that sort of live beyond New York, and those are kind of Broadway shows are what do that, like a show that then will kind of like be done. You'll do in high school, and you'll do around the world, and you'll do in your community, and you'll do in your school. And mm -hmm. so I, I kind of like to do things on, or I'm excited about doing things on a big scale, whether it be hundreds of people in the Delacorte or a big show like Prada. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Uh, hey, Caitlin, mm -hmm. what are the people saying online? Yes. So Haley from Facebook says, Shana, thank you for reviving Twelfth Night this summer. What are some of your favorite lyrics you've ever written? Ooh. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Tough question. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, favorite lyrics I've ever written. I was, there's a song I wrote for As You Like It, for the musical, and the finale of As You Like It is these four weddings. Uh -huh. And so the idea was sort of making a big finale of vows that were not only being taken between the couple, but being taken between sort of like the big community. Mm -hmm. And so I did, I did this research where I was like just combining vows from all different cultures and religions, and you just notice like mm -hmm. a lot of the threads are really the same. And I wrote this song called Still I Will Love. Mm. That, yeah, and it, it sort of has become an anthem song for the public works group and that's something right. I'm really proud of. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. I love that. And what was it like to t c turn Twelfth Night into this musicalized version for the summer? It was an amazing challenge. I call it, like, in, it was like Odyssey of the Mind for theater. <laughs> it was like taking the three hour Shakespeare play, radically cutting it down to work for a 90 minute musical for a hundred people. Cause in the, you know, the original play, you don't necessarily have that big of an ensemble. Right. There's not like a bill. So it's like, why do there need to be 100 Illyrians? How are they not just set decoration? How are they actually like integral to the storytelling? And then how to take, you know, in Twelfth Night, the songs aren't just ornamental kind of song, you know, a jester singing a song like in a maybe classic Shakespeare. They're actually like lifting character and story. And so it was a great challenge. Like having never really like formally studied composition or having done any kind wow. of grad school, sort of the most amazing grad, unofficial grad school I could ask for to take Twelfth Night and as you like it, these like, classic plays and figure out how to make them function hmm. as pieces of musical theater. So it was it was great. It was like kind of, of flexing a muscles. A lot of people haven't turned Shakespeare into yeah. musical. I mean, it's not that common, really. I mean, there's yeah. some like obvious, like, you know, West Side Story is inspired by Romeo and Juliet. Or, right, but or to really Trujillo take. Trujano Verona, obviously, was like a rock, fun version of. But it is, mm -hmm. it's a huge challenge. Yeah, because the poetry is already in the words. Right. So it's for me, it's also trying to, the assignment on the table was kind of preserve the integrity of the Shakespeare text in the book, mm -hmm. but then the lyrics make contemporary, which is, that was the balance to strike, to make it feel accessible all the way through and to make it somehow feel cohesive as though it was from one voice, even though obviously it wasn't because there was mm -hmm. Shakespeare and then there were these uber contemporary lyrics. But so it was always about trying to like navigate that balance. Mm -hmm. and, cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Casey, Casey from Facebook asks, what is the best advice that you've ever been given? What's the best of OE? Let me see. <laughs> Been a lot of good advice. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, to me, there's this thing, you know, I've been lucky to kind of be mentored first in college by Liz Suedos and then after college by Janine Tesori. And it's sort of, you know, they both kind of have refrains that amount to the same thing, which is do the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, do the, and that's the one thing you can control is, is just writing every day and doing, doing the work and the rest don't worry about right. the rest. And that's right. what I've tried to hold on to and sort of make it my more like I can, it's hard to control what happens in this business, in your career, or any of that outside stuff. It's very little control, but for me with writing, like at least I can write and I can do the work and I can spend the time and, and that's, 
would have tried to hold on to. Are you interested in continuing acting on top of yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I for me, I like to perform in my own work the way that I've done with 12th Night As You Like It. I like it, the way I did with Old Hats with the, with the yeah. clowns. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. So I like to do it in different combinations. I mean, sort of depending project to project. Yeah. Yeah. Are there like dream roles as an actor? Oh, man. Like any classic things, the CDs you grew up with? I mean, you were talking about Funny Girl, and I was like, I think that's totally been like a fantasy of mine one day. (laughs) I mean, any young Jewish girl who loves musical theater, like, come on. It's like, (laughs) but uh, but, yeah. Call Rosie O'Donnell. (laughs) She's apparently putting the whole thing together. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we can probably, let's do one more question. Okay, Caitlin from Twitter asks, if you have a dream, this goes off of Paul's question, a dream Shakespeare role that you oh. want to take on yourself. Oh. Well, on it, I, you know, it's a roundabout answer, but I really, Jayquees and As You Like It totally was it. Because to kind of take that traditionally male role right. and make it my own and make it really this, like, young female writer character, mm-hmm. that like, I just hope I get a chance to play Jay Quiz again. Mm-hmm. It's, it's longer than just a weekend, because that was so fun. <laughs> so, As You Like It is at the Keegan Theater in D.C. It starts, like, mm-hmm. in a week, I, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what else do you have? Are you performing, or is there yeah, anything? Yeah, um, I played a show at Joe's Pub last night. I have another concert oh. there on November 12th with Laura cool. Benanti is my guest. That will be fun. She's and good. I, I'm right. Yeah, she's She's in My Fair Lady starting tonight. I know. First, per, first performance. Congratulations, Happy Laura, Laura. Benanti Day. Um, and then I'm writing a musical about the women's suffrage movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell I'm, me a little bit more about that. Yeah, that musical is about Alice Paul, who's the young militant activist, a kind of pioneer picketing the White House and a lot of other radical tactics in the suffrage movement. And my story, I mean, the suffrage movement, well, we could be here all day because I love talking about this, but yeah. I'll try and give you It was, you know, like a 72 year <laughs> movement that lasted. We all hear about Seneca Falls in 1848, but that was just the beginning. And my story focuses on like the final push to get the 19th Amendment, which starts around 1913, wow. where on the day after Willie, Woodrow Wilson's inauguration, there was a massive women's march on the Capitol. Sound familiar? <laughs> it's like the exact same. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, but I'm working on that. You must feel more uh, inspiration to get it done than ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the ulti- yeah, completely. It's, it's, it's a good outlet for all the rage. <laughs> to just put it into Channel the, the rage. Outlet. Totally. <laughs> Take your awesome. rage and turn it. Thank the you so much. Everyone, get this. Download it. Buy it in the store if you have a slot to put these in. There's all <laughs> sorts of ways to consume it. Uh, congratulations on everything. Thank I can't you. wait to see all your upcoming shows and to have you back sometime. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Nathan Sawstone, about his upcoming solo concert at Feinstein's 54 Below.